Good afternoon and welcome to Indiana Law TV. My name is Cindy Speaker and I have with me today Carl Brizzy, Hi. prosecutor, local celebrity. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> you are, you are. So I want to go back and talk uh, about the Indiana stage collapse. Obviously you're very involved in that. Um, we have an image here of the band was Sugarland. Was Sugarland, yep. Okay. And tell us a little bit about that and some of the issues associated with that. Well, Jennifer Nettles and Christian Bush, uh, formerly Sugarland, they've since they've since broken up. But uh, the summer of 2011, um, Indiana experienced one of the um, probably one of the strongest gusts of winds and storms um, in a very long time, and it caused the the structure, the stage structure at the Indiana State Fair to collapse and um, no one in the band was injured but there were thousands of uh, Sugarland fans there present seven people were killed and and uh, 50 were injured over mm. 50. I actually have a clip let's roll the clip and you'll see how horrifying this is <laughs> goes down it's it's really devastating and I can't even imagine being there right so so my client was working uh, for a security company at the time and he was actually uh, right there in the front of the stage as you're looking at the video mm -hmm. to the right hand side as you're looking wow. at it and wow. was in the process of sort of pushing people out of harm's way <sighs> uh, when the, when the stage fell on him so um, so what we had to do was we had to file wrongful death lawsuits and, and as you know Cindy a wrongful death lawsuit is is a civil action that you file against uh, against either people or entities, corporations, companies, uh, for for negligently causing the death right. of of people, and you've got pretty much two years to do that from the time that it happens. And what you're seeking is is money damages. Yeah, yeah, and unfortunately, as we know, that's the only way to get promote change. Is you you have to hit them in their pocketbook, or change doesn't happen. Typically, well, that. And uh, that's, that's the only way to get any sort of compensation. Um, my client became a single mother of two in a, in a fraction of a second. Right, right. Um, and, and, and so that's, you know, you can't rewind, you can't bring back the lives that were lost. Um, but what you can do is you can file lawsuits to recover um, basically money to help the victims uh, live out the rest of their lives without their, you know, without the primary breadwinner, without the dad. Um, right. without, without the person who mowed the lawn and could fix the cars and all the other things that yeah. that you know spouses do. So, so and as you said, there was there really was warning here because I know that one of the newspaper articles was suggesting that I believe that Sugarland had no fault. There was no fault. Everything was just kind of act of God and things like that. And you were quoted in that article um, in the Huffington Post where you talked a little bit about that. So what we're dealing with with this case is basically there's there were two completely separate processes that came under real scrutiny, right? One was how the stage was constructed, how it was put together, what it was anchored to, what was hung on it in terms of the backdrop and the curtains and the band's equipment and all of those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And then the second piece, which was equally as important but completely different, was the decision-making process that went into okay, what happens when inclement weather is coming? Right. And the evidence was, was very strong that, that several people in the chain, both in the chain of the people running the state fair and in the management chain for Sugarland itself, knew that bad weather was, was, was coming and there was all sorts of um, back and forth and sort of communication, I don't even want to say errors, but just communication issues. Right. Where folks either didn't want to communicate or didn't want to delay for whatever the reasons. And as you saw, yeah, it happened fairly quickly. After yeah, that. yeah, devastating, really devastating. Well, and recent article, uh, some positive change has happened, and I know that recently there was, as a matter of fact, I think this was just a day or two ago, where there was an article about the decision not to use temporary stages for concerts and performances. Yeah, so recently you've seen even across the country where you've had temporary structures. Uh, that have fallen down or blown yeah. down in, in inclement weather and so shortly after the indiana state fair stage collapse the government said hey 
Um, we're going to put a moratorium on these temporary structures. And now here we are, uh, what, almost four years later, and we're still not convinced that even with the safeguards put in place after what happened in 2011, that these, temp these temporary structures are safe. And I'll even go on and say something else, too. I, and this is just a complete aside, but I'm not sure what the public policy reason is for governments, right, mm -hmm. to put on concerts. <laughs> it's it's been something that's that's gnawed at me from the very beginning of this of this case because government really ought not be in the business of right. of promoting bands, right? right? I mean, yeah. so um, government should get out of the way, let the people who know how to put on concerts put on concerts, and government right. ought to ought to stick to uh, what it ought to be doing, which is preserving, protecting the security and liberty of its citizens. Right. What, what would you say as far as what change you believe came out of this and what further change you would like to see, if any? Well, let me say uh, two things. One is that the, the state of Indiana, the attorney general and the governor stepped up immediately. Um, they accepted what responsibility they had and they worked really hard to help compensate the victims. So that's, so that's mm -hmm. the first thing. It's just yeah. sort of a shout out to our state that's good. for good government. Right, right. Um, the second piece is I, I think what came out of that was um, the management process and what happens in an emergency and who's actually in charge right. and who's making the decisions. And I think they they figured out what the problem was in the communication chain and they've got that dialed in. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you. This is Cindy Speaker for Indiana Law TV.